All right, we're on hole number nine. I'm on hole number nine of the Silver State Tournament. I'm in the opening round of the Ricky Division, and I am, I'm flat out, I'm both on all of my accounts, I don't have par, power five ball. So in my in my main account here, I've got a power five ball. My goal is to get out into this range right here. I'm going to try and hit somewhere in the four, uh, 425 to 435 range, somewhere in that neighborhood, and get out into this area. And I'm the deal there is is that I can get a bounce here, a bounce here, and I'm trying to get on the green. And the other day I put on three top spin, and I needed about three and a half. And I was just a little short. I got up on the green and then it rolled back down and ended up in the rough. In my in my other accounts, because I don't have five power balls, what I'm doing is I'm using a big tapa. And with the other shot, I'm using an extra mile and a big dog. Here I'm using a big tapa and a big dog. And I'm doing the bounce over where I'm here. And I'm trying to bounce it out into this range. And I'm trying to get into the three... What I really want to be is like 375 range-ish. But... There is a big difference between being 375 here and being 375 here. So if you're 375 and you're out here, when you're coming in, you can barely catch this. And when you're 375 and you're over here, you can catch this fairly easy. So placement is really big. But you don't want to eke up too much because if you do pick up good distance, you may dribble into the rough right here. So you want to be in this window more than you want to be in this window. You can still get it done from over here, but here you got a little bit easier shot. And then what I'm doing is with that three power ball, I'm trying to land on this and I'm trying to use the wind to my advantage where I'm putting on enough top spin that it looks like I'm going to dig into the sand. And then I'm letting the wind carry me the rest of the distance and I'm using max over power and curl to bring my ball this way so I can feed through this rough and try and land on this pad. And if you can get on this pad right here, and you've got a wedge like, you know, if you've got an inbringer or a rapier where a rapier's got tons of backspin and you don't have to engage the rough down here, you can actually start off on the green and actually go right for the cup and give yourself a really decent look at, at eagle. And if I end up in the rough down here, if I end up in the sand, the deal is I'm going to bring, I want to make sure I bring the right clubs for that, for those situations. So... I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bring my extra mile, my big dog, and I want to bring every single thing else in my bag that's backspin. And I'm going to bring my claw because it's more accurate than my thorn. It's 75% accurate, so I'm going to write some numbers down here real quick. And I'll be all right. I've got my rapier. I'm going to take my Nirvana and Spitfire just because, and I'm kind of stuck here because the Nirvana and Spitfire are, if you get into a little bit of trouble, you're going to need that distance. So um, I'm going to hope that I'm in the fairway and that I'm not having to do something special, but I'm going to, I, I need to keep those in the bag because if you end up in problems in the mid, in the middle part of the course, then you could be in, you could be in the brown stuff, that brown emoji. We all know what that means. I'll open up this pin chest, get it rolling, whatever's in it. Now, I never really pay too much attention about what's in chests. Chests are a numbers game. You guys got to open up lots and lots of chests. And eventually you'll get the club cards that you need to upgrade your clubs and it just takes a while. It takes, it, it takes a lot of chests and it takes you always having a slot open. You never want to play without an open chest. I'm going to use the wind to help get me out there. I'm going to do a straightforward shot. And hit it great to the right. About bring it half. Possibly two rings. I think I have enough room out here. I think I had more room on the right than I do on the left. Let's see what kind of distance we got. 324, so I'm almost to where I wanted to get. 330s right there in that range. 325, 335 should get you up there, but that's uh, that'll at least give me a look at it. thing is you have to kind of extrapolate the deal because your big dog even when it's maxed out it doesn't have now here's the 
boy, I'll tell you. Okay, they moved it back enough so that they should be fine. But that spot right there is definitely one of those holes that on the drive you don't want to dig way down in there because it does carry it. It rolls down and it'll carry a little bit farther than it looks like. And you can see how close they were and how far they moved back. So it carries a little bit down there. You got to be real careful because you don't want to clip the rough on that side. Then it is super difficult. All right. Three five. That is three. Take off about two and a little, and then just try and hit it perfect. Hit it great to the left, which took out that little teeny bit. Let's see if I have enough. Not even close. Need to put a little teeny bit more curl on it. That great to the left killed me. I should have been over here. I would have just barely caught it. If it seems like I'm being tentative on that top spin, trying to get it up in there, I am. Because I'll tell you, if you catch this at the wrong angle here, you will fly to the other side and you're instantly in the rough. I mean, the fairway here is smaller than the fringe around it. So if you roll across it, you're going to roll right off the backside and you're going to end up in the rough. And it's a very, very tricky shot from back there. So... There's that fine line when you're trying to do that, that kind of rough bump. I actually think I might have a better shot at getting the eagle if I just go ahead and land on that fairway pad instead of trying to get over to the other side. And that may be what I start doing because I may have a better shot. I have a really, really serious shot of getting up there. You know, 70 rings to the, to the left. I have a really serious shot of getting on from that fairway pad with my rapier, with my wedge, and I may, I may in the future, and the wind's going with me, so it's easy to adjust the wind out where you can actually land up here and just try and get it in the hole. I may actually just try and land on this pad and not try and get over because it is a very tricky shot to get over and you could, and you take a big risk of ending up in this rough or this fairway, but you also take a huge risk because you're dealing with such a short area at the very end of your flight to try and catch that little teeny bit of rough on a second bounce, actually a third bounce, without blowing the green and then ending up on the other side. So I think I like the deal is is it's a difficult shot to get up there with a three power ball because you got to do all kinds of stuff to get on that pad, but it's fairly easy with the shot that I'm taking right there with the five power ball. And I think instead of going for it like that, I'm going to lay it up on that pad. And that's going to give me an actual, a really serious fairway shot with a really good club to get up on the green. Because I think if I was on that fairway pad going in there, you still got to hit it perfect. But I think my odds of picking up the eagle at least once in the weekend round are going to be a much higher than trying to get that rough bump dialed in because the deal with the rough bump is, is if you're at two, 425 you're going to be dealing with almost max top spin and if you're at 435 you're going to be dealing with three and a little so there's going to be some variance there but it's going to be much easier to get onto that fairway pad good game good luck in the tournament all right, front nine minus 13. 
exactly what I was looking for, but not uh, not out of the realm of where we're at. We really want to go into the weekend round thinking minus 30 if you're trying to get a win. And like I said in one of the earlier videos, I'm not sure in the weekend round, the top three are going to be wild. So if you're shooting the minimum score, you should still be you know, looking at a top 20, maybe a top 25 just because of the way this tournament is. And there's tons of opportunities to pick one up. So if you can pick up one, it really changes your real estate. But I think for the people that are in the top three, if you're really trying to go for a banner this week, you're going to have to really be on. And you need to be looking at at least a minus 28 to give yourself any shot. And if you can pick up, you know, that's picking up all the par fours. If you can pick up an Alvy or a hole-in-one and do that to try and eke out that minus 30, you've got a shot. All right, that was hole number nine of the Silver State Tournament in the opening round of the Rookie Division. Thanks for watching.